over the years, Halpa has released quite a few models of JetBlue aircraft, and with their colorful tails they have always been a welcomed addition. So can this latest model from Halpa follow in the line? With that, welcome to a new episode of Review, where we today will take a closer look at an Airbus A321neo from JetBlue. At the front of the box we have the cutout, so we can get a glimpse of the aircraft model inside, and on top of the box we have the JetBlue branding. The backside of the box looks, well, in my opinion, quite disappointing, but we have covered this extensively in previous reviews and of course also in my latest video, Why Hapa Needs to be Cancelled, so if you want to know more about this, then check out that video. And here she is, the Airbus A321neo from JetBlue in their current livery with the balloon's tail. So with no further ado, let's take a closer look at the aircraft model itself and see what details it holds in store for us. And we start off with the tail section where we on the vertical stabilizer find the JetBlue branding on top of the balloon's design. JetBlue does a couple of designs or actually quite a few designs and they always interchange them on their aircraft. On the fuselage we then find the flag of the United States of America, the full registration code of the aircraft, the aircraft type specification and at the very tail we also have a little bit of detailing around the APU exhaust. At the front of the aircraft and across the fuselage we then again have the JetBlue branding and underneath the cockpit windows we find the name of the aircraft. In this case the aircraft is named after David Nealman who is the founder of JetBlue. The cockpit section itself is a bit bare boned to be honest I think we should have more details here but what we do have are the window wipers which have been printed on. The engine nacelles have been given the dark blue coloring of the JetBlue branding and they cover the JetBlue.com web address. Overall I think the engine nacelles look rather nice but of course they are slightly too big giving pretty much no ground clearance. That is of course a very known issue with all A320 Neo family aircraft models from Hapa Wings. If we look into the engine from the front however we can see very nicely the engine fan blades. On the fuselage just above the wings we then also have the emergency exits printed on and that of course leads us straight to the wings because we should definitely also take a look at those. If we look here at the top side we can see the different flaps, slats and spoilers carved out very nicely. We also have some different shades of grey adding some additional detailing. The underside of the wings I think look really nice as well. The wings of course also have winglets and they look really nice with the dark blue colouring of the jet blue branding. If we look here at the landing gear we can see it's this standard landing gear we get for all Harper Wings A320neo family aircraft. Overall I think it's a decent standard. And then last but not least we also have the doors to the cargo compartments printed on here in the back side of the aircraft and here at the front of the aircraft. So there we have it, the Airbus A321neo from JetBlue in their current livery with the balloon design on the vertical stabilizer. And what can we say about this aircraft model? Overall I think it's a very decent standard model from Harper Wings. The print quality is excellent, I really can't fault it there. The physical details from a quality perspective I would also say are excellent. But I do have two issues with this model. Unfortunately these two issues don't just affect this specific model but all A320neo family aircraft models from Harper Wings and Scale 500. The first issue I have is the ground clearance of the engines that is simply pretty much non-existent and Harper really needs to rework that detail. The other thing I really would like Harper to improve on is the detailing around the cockpit section that is simply too bare bone for my taste, just a few small printed details that would do wonders. So if you can live with these issues then I would say yes absolutely the aircraft is worth having in one's collection but if not then there isn't really any sign of change from Harper and there aren't any other manufacturers in that scale so then you would probably have to look at a model in a different scale. Now with that we have reached the end of today's episode if you have enjoyed the video then do feel free to leave a like that really does help us out and of course if you are new around here why not hit subscribe that would be absolutely awesome. With that I'd like to say thank you so much for watching hope to see you soon again I'm checking out and bye. Thank you.